Good morning, everyone. My name is Elena Campbell. I'm president of the Rochester Regional Chamber of Commerce. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. This is our second webinar that we have presented uh, this week, actually. So as you know, since we can't have in-person events, uh, we have to turn to our wonderful technology uh, that we have uh, via Zoom and other platforms. So we're excited to bring you this webinar today. Uh, I mentioned yesterday, if you were on our member uh, call, weekly update call that we hold every Wednesday um, at noon, I mentioned some of the other events that we have coming up that, and some of the things that we're working on as well. Uh, first of all, I do wanna let you know we are recording this. Um, so if you know of others who couldn't jump on at this time, uh, let them know that uh, we will share the link via the Pulse and social media and post it on our website as well. So we're working really hard to identify topics and issues that you're dealing with right now that all of our businesses are obviously dealing with right now. And we're trying to find you uh, the resources and, then the, and the information that you need so that you can navigate everything. Um, on our Wednesday calls, uh, we always hear from our local uh, leaders. So that's a great update. Uh, it's sponsored always by one of our partners and we feature one of them uh, talking about how their business uh, is weathering the current situation. Uh, then we also hear from uh, Mayor Barnett or at least the city of Rochester Hills, uh, Mayor Bixon from the city of Rochester and uh, usually Blaine Wing, the uh, city manager, and then also Christy Trevero, the director of the Downtown Development Authority. So we do that to keep you in touch with what's going on locally um, in our communities. We also like to highlight on that call any new resources that we might find out about. You also know I've been sending out about every two to three days uh, an email blast with links to all of the newest resources plus all of the existing resources that we've highlighted in the past. We also have a new tab on our website called COVID-19 uh, where we dump all of those resources. So if you ever can't remember what we said on the call or what we pointed to on the call, um, you can always go to that tab on our website and we are collecting all of the, uh, those links in that spot too. So that's our one repository where we're putting everything for you. So uh, I am going to turn the call over to Leanne Labrack. Uh, for those of you uh, who've heard Leanne before, we get him about once a year uh, as a speaker for a chamber event. We absolutely love hearing from him. He is highly entertaining, uh, which is uh, a rare instance, I think, for someone who's a CPA and an attorney. <laughs> to have an amazing sense of humor, uh, as well as ex an extreme amount of knowledge uh, to share. He's spoken in the past at our economic uh, outlook luncheon that we uh, have held uh, previously. And then last, uh, was it last year? Maybe it was two years ago ago now, Leanne, but when the tax reform uh, was winding its way through, uh, we had him come and speak about the tax reform and give us an update on that. So we really appreciate all of his expertise. He, is, he also serves on the Michigan CPA uh, Board of Directors and actually helped write, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Leanne, but the uh, Michigan's language for the PPP, the Paycheck Protection uh, Program. Well, yeah, thanks. Uh, I didn't write it. I actually did the video. I did the uh, video and part of the website on behalf of the MICPA on the PPP program. So uh, interesting thing to all of us. So thanks, Elena. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. Got some uh, interesting things to talk about. Uh, welcome to uh, seminars in the days of COVID-19. I hope you all enjoyed the cookies I baked. I'm eating them and really having fun. Um, I, I do like the fact on Zoom that we can change our video backgrounds. Tanya has got, obviously already got that ready. Uh, I decided I like the White House, so I'll, I'll operate for a little while from the White House, and when we have questions, I'll go to my question background, which will be this. Um, if I give you bad news, I might go to uh, this, and we'll, we'll go on that basis. But um, let's go back, and I, I just want to get to some, some ideas. I'm going to share my screen with you, 
and I want to go through the CARES Act if we could. And in, in order to do this, I'm going to make it into a little bit of a slideshow so you can pretend we're having one of our, our great um, pieces that we always do and we're, we're discussing things and having cookies and coffee and having a great luncheon meeting. I can't wait till we can do that. I promise you all that when I get a chance, we're going to a restaurant. I'm going to go to a restaurant every meal for three weeks. I swear to God, I'm going to, I'm going to take everybody I know out for a restaurant. It's, it's wild. I, I made a list of resolutions, post-COVID resolutions. And I was talking to Ann, my wife, about how much I'm missing, you know, going down to Tiger, you know, go, I still call it Tiger Stadium, going to see the Tigers. And I, she said, you really missing sports? I go, I just missed the action of the thing. I said, I even say I'm not going to whine about the Lions anymore. She goes, I'm writing that down. If you're not going to whine about the Lions, I really want to see it. But, you know, I'm, Michigan, <laughs> I'm missing Michigan State football. I'm missing all – I'm just missing the whole thing. I, I, I can't wait for us to get somewhere, uh, somewhere else in a better place. But I want to talk about the CARE. I want to talk about the CARES Act. It's huge. Uh, Vince is probably up to his elbows and alligators with the way things are going. I'll run through some of the pieces. I do want to talk about the PPP, which got extended um, and dramatically extended, and what's going on with that. That's enormous. Another three hundred and ten billion dollars for small businesses. Uh, everyone got a direct. Everybody who filed a twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen tax return that made income under a certain amount got a one time direct deposit. If they didn't e file, they can track their payment via the IRS website. Uh, the payment is $1,200 per taxpayer. Uh, if a married couple, it's $2,400. If they had dependent children, 17 or under, $500 a child. If you had adult children like I did, who had lower income, they got the $1,200. The payments for uh, adjusted gross income for $75,000 that phased out up to $98,000. Uh, $98, and married couples, $150,000 phasing out at $199,000. Most, a lot of people already got their checks. Um, it's a, basically a ta tax-free check that just goes into your bank account, like a, like a refund, a ta income tax refund that you didn't pay. Uh, the Unemployment Act has substantially provided more unemployment benefits. People have to file for state unemployment. There's an additional $600 from the federal government for four months on top of the state programs. It extends the benefits through December 31st. It applies to not only individuals who are W-2 employees, but to self-employed independent contractors and gig economy workers. Uh, it's a weird thing. When Congress does stuff in three days, it always scares me. It scares me when they do things in three years. But they put this in place, and if you make less than 21 bucks an hour, you make more money being unemployed than employed. So I've got now a whole bunch of clients that I told, get your butt out there and go get this PPP program, go get your check, and they all did it. And then they said, how do I get it forgiven, which we'll talk about. And I said, yeah, this is how you get it forgiven. You got to bring your employees back. And they're already seeing the issue of the employee saying, I don't want to come back. I'm making 900 bucks a week on unemployment. I was making 600 bucks a week working for you and paying payroll taxes and paying state taxes and driving to work. And now I got to have masks and take my temperature. And I think we're going to be seeing this issue really start coming up in about eight weeks. Uh, there is some other glitches that I'm seeing in the PPP that I haven't seen solved yet. Uh, it's, it's a daily action. I literally start my day, say what changed today and go on. It used to be, I started my year saying what's going to change this year. And I could sit around going, oh, if they changed the tax law, I can go talk to CPAs about that. Or, oh, they changed something else. And now I'm sitting here going, okay, what did they change today? And that's, we're literally in that scenario. I did hear some things from the governor's office. I'll share that with you as we go. Uh, payroll taxes. The act allows employers to delay the pay portion of their payroll taxes for 2020. That's only Social Security taxes, not Medicare taxes. And it's only the employer portion. But that's deferred until 2021 and 2022. They did modify a rule. It used to be if you applied for the PPP, you couldn't do this. Now you do not get to defer payroll taxes during the PPP period. It's a better deal for business owners. An interesting one is they waive the 10% early withdrawal penalty for distributions up to $100,000 for coronavirus related purposes. It sounded at the beginning when they wrote it that it was going to be a stringent piece. It's that you were affected by coronavirus. And by virtue of the fact that everybody in the United States is now pretty much staying at home, we're all affected by the coronavirus. That's retroactive to January 1st. It's interesting, not only is there no penalty, but the taxes can be in 2020, 2021, or 2022. Uh, it's a huge thing for business owners that I'm seeing. If you've got a pass through entity, you lose a lot of money this year. Let's say you've got a $100,000 loss this year. It might mean that you could take $100,000 out of your 401k plan and pay zero tax on it. So I'm carefully using this as a financial planning device for my business owner clients. I'm also carefully looking at this for folks who, uh, who have bigger IRAs, bigger 401ks, 
and you're going to hear my, uh, my Castle Black prediction of income taxes in the future. I have a rather dour look about what I think the economy will be later. I, I am certain we will recover, but I'll do a quick quiz and Vince can't answer this. What do you think the income tax rate was in 1945? Just take a quick stab. If anybody wants to throw it on the chat, but I'll, I'll, I'll foreshadow it. At the end of World War II, the income tax rate maximum rate was 94%. In 1916, the income tax rate was 15%. And in 1917, when we were finishing up World War I, and we had a little tiny thing called the Spanish flu epidemic that killed 25 million people, the tax rate went from 15 to 63%. So here's my, my one prognosis. In fact, just to make it work, I've got to give you the, the proper visual effect. I, since I was sharing my screen, I can't do it. Pretend I have the, ca the castle from, uh, from Game of Thrones behind me. Um, we, we put $5 trillion into this, $5 trillion. Not everybody's going to get coronavirus, but everybody's going to pay for it. So I just want you to remember that. 401k loan limits increase from $50,000 to $100,000. Uh, borrowing money out of your 401k plan, that's okay. The withdrawal and the 401k loans, my advice is you got to do when and where. When are you going to take it and where are you going to take it from? So I've had clients say, well, I'm going to go get the money out of my 401k. I said, well, if you take it out of equities, you sold your equities. If you take it out of fixed in your money markets, then you're not losing much. Remember the opportunity cost. If you're a 5% or greater owner, you can't take a 401k loan from your plan. Uh, so that cuts out small businesses, but we can still do the $100,000 withdrawal. And as you hit questions on these, you know, pop them up on the chat or do whatever you want to do. Another big one that changed is RMDs are suspended, require minimum distributions. If you were 72 or over, you were required to take a distribution from your IRA. That number used to be 70 and a half. They changed that rule on the, at the end of 2019, which used to be the big thing that I was thinking about. Now it's a very small thing I'm thinking about. Uh, if you inherited an IRA, you also don't have to take uh, your distribution, your required distribution. If you already took your distribution, you have 60 days to roll it back in. And they actually did an interesting thing. They extended that 60-day rule. I've never seen them do that before. But you now have basically until July 15th to roll any RMDs that you took basically up to about March, uh, February 15th, and put them back in your plan. Uh, a lot of people will now have better tax rates. They can do Roth conversions. So we're talking to a lot of clients about what to do with that. The RMD suspension is valuable. Uh, it means you don't have to take your money out of your plan. You don't have to take it out in a down market and so forth. Uh, charitable contributions, you can now do above the line deduction for charity without having to itemize deductions. I'm on the Rochester, uh, Greater Rochester Community Foundation. We were just talking about that. Uh, we're trying to do backpacks within a blessing. Blessings in a backpack, which is where we feed kids, you know, give kids uh, food and give them a backpack full of food. Uh, a lot of us are throwing in $100. And I'm saying to folks, you know, you got a $300 above the line. How about $100 locally for local Rochester kids? Let's do something like that. Uh, the limits on charitable contributions are changed. You can still make a donation directly from an IRA if you're 70 and a half or older. Of course, you know, my friends in Congress always have to keep Vince and I in business, so they make all the rules different. So we, it's now 70 and a half for a charitable contribution, 72 for an RMD, and so on and so forth. That's why, that's why Vince and I both contribute to both political parties, just so this will always stay in chaos. Um, and I will, I will share some things I heard from my friends at EY's national office and what we're hearing on the AICPA and the MICPA. This is the big one. Um, $350 billion plus another $310 billion of new money came in yesterday, pretty much. Uh, $60 billion of which is going to credit unions and small banks. And this is one where, you know, I don't know. I, I, I've been in business for 45 years. I've been a CPA for most of that. I've been an attorney for most of that. I've never seen anything like this year. I've, I've never seen a one-month period where I've had a bull market and a bear market. I've never seen interest rates go as low as they've gone. I've never seen oil at a negative 30 bucks a barrel. I mean, I've never, and I've never seen Congress change every part of the law in three days, including the SBA rules. But there are two programs coming out of the small business relief that are very germane to us. And I think most of you have seen them ad nauseum. I wrote about one in Forbes and I've just updated the article on my Forbes column. And that is, uh, we've got this paycheck protection program. The paycheck protection program, if you do it right, is free money. It is effectively a 1% loan from the SBA to a business to maintain its payroll. 
as Vince has probably done till he's sick of it, uh, you take the monthly payroll costs average over the last 12 months, plus some other expenses, multiply that times two and a half, and that's the amount of your loan. You then are forgiven up to eight weeks payroll. And the eight weeks payroll is, what do you have at the end of the eight weeks? What's your full-time equivalent and what's your payroll costs? You can use up to $100,000 of employee payroll. You can even do it for an independent contractor. You can do it for a nonprofit entity. So a church can get this, or the community foundation can get this, or a hospital can get this. So all of these things can be applied. When it is forgiven, it is tax-free. You don't pay it back. It does not require any personal guarantees. It does not affect any other aspects of what you pay. Uh, most businesses heard about this. They did the gold rush to get in there. Some of the banks did a really good job. Some of the banks did a horrendous job. Uh, one bank who has a, a stadium where the baseball game is played in did a terrible, terrible job. And another one that uses a, um, a stagecoach should note that they only took their best customers on the stagecoach and they didn't give it to small businesses like they were supposed to. Uh, we probably all have read now that Steak Shack gave their money back, but Ruth Chris didn't. Ruth Chris went out and na nabbed it for every single one of the restaurants. So uh, there's a lot of things on this. It applies to big and small businesses. The latest round is dedicated more towards small businesses. And in town, Chief Credit Union is doing PPP applications. So I was just talking to Tom Delusion yesterday. Uh, Chief is running the programs and they're going through Chief. I know MSGCU is also running them. The credit unions are doing them. I'm seeing better action from the smaller banks. Um, my clients are getting a lot better. The, the fastest one I ever saw was Metaqua State Bank. It was a, they had the money in the, in the client's hands almost immediately. An issue that we're playing with right now is this eight weeks. Um, I heard on pretty good authority yesterday that we're going to get extended to the 15th of May. Uh, I'm, don't take me to, to task on that and don't record this and tell everybody that I said it. But um, I did hear, maybe I just thought it up in a, I thought it up in a dream. I was dreaming and I thought that the governor said she was going to extend it to the 15th. Um, if she extends it to the 15th and you're taking a PPP program, there's two weeks that you can have your employees back on payroll. I guess you can. You're paying them to stay home. So uh, it is critically important that you do good accounting on how you maintain the payroll and the cash flow assistance. 75% of the forgiven amount has to be for payroll, and 25% can be for other things like utilities, transportation, phones, internet, a whole bunch of stuff. They have changed the rules. I've counted five times since they announced the program. So it's pretty critical you have the up-to-date information or that your CPA has the up-to-date information. Um, if, if you haven't gotten a PPP, I would say, as soon as you get off our webcast, go, go start working on it. It's, it I, I actually think the 310 billion is gonna run out just like the 349 billion ran out. And I, I just, again, here's a quick one for you. If I was just paying for just the CARES Act, I would have to raise the maximum tax rate in the United States to 46% for 10 years. And I'd have to raise the corporate tax rate to 28% for 10 years just to pay for this one bill, okay? So I, you know, I don't want to sound totally dire, but recognize this is free money now. Get it and hang on to it. Worst case scenario, by the way, if you don't get the loan forgiven, uh, you just keep it and pay the 1%, and there's no payments for the first six months. There's another program that got more funding too, the EIDL, which is a disaster loan. It's a real loan. It's a real SBA loan. So to get the PPP, you go to your bank or credit union. To get the EIDL, you go directly to the SBA. Um, I can't stress enough that this is probably one of the most important things for small businesses. Tell all your friends and colleagues in the small business field that they need to do this. I've had weird things where people saying, I'm not, I'm not qualified for it. I mean, I, I, I wish I had a, a dollar for every time I'm arguing with somebody's CPA. I have a you know, friend who runs a, a horse stable and she does writing lessons and her CPA said, well, you can't get it. I go, what do you mean you can't get it? And, and he said, well, she's not adversely affected. She, she's not giving any writing lessons. I said, that's there, right there. Is, you know, it's obvious she can get it. Independent contractors can get it. Self-employed people can get it. Vince is probably going through, like I am, every one of the tax returns he has that has a Schedule C. If you had a Schedule C, you can get the, you can get the PPP. So it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting piece. I think almost every business should be at least looking into it. Uh, net operating loss rules are, limit, are eliminated. You can now carry back NOLs five years. Uh, we're going to be very busy with, our, busy with our business owners. In fact, I'm going to be doing a little forum once a week, and I'm going to be bringing in CPAs and attorneys to talk about the PPP, but more importantly, tax planning with NOLs. Uh, a business that's going to have operating losses this year, which is probably going to be a lot of them, can carry those back five years, and there's a lot of things we can look at. 
How do we do that with offsetting income? Do we offset some of those losses with Roth conversions? Do we offset those with, you know, LIFO reserve questions? I mean, there's all kinds of places that in a business return, we can go back and look at. And so this is going to be an important thing for business owners. Same thing with excess loss limitations. One thing that upset me with the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, and though, for any of you who are awake when I gave my presentation on that, might remember I, I said, what's going to happen when we have a recession? And I found out the answer. They'll pull all the rules that they put in place. So if a person has a pass-through entity, like a subchapter S corporation or a partnership, they can now deduct the loss and offset that with other income. They could up, offset it with capital gains or offset it with Roth conversions or, like I said, a whole variety of other parts. Um, the interest expense limitation has also been changed. You can now uh, deduct up to 50% of your of taxable income and interest, and you can use your 2019 tax return to do that. A large corporations are getting about $500 billion. $50 billion of that is going to airlines, and, 50, and a smaller amount is going for air cargo carriers. Uh, I was, I, I'm always having an interesting time looking at this in layers. In 1972, that tells you how old I am, I was trying to program a mainframe computer to play chess. And in 1972, if you remember mainframe, and most of you aren't even around in 1972, for any of you who were around in 1972, mainframe computers were in a giant room and they were huge boxes and they had tape drives and they had other stuff and they, and they occupied enormous amounts of space and heated the room up and it was, you had cards and you carried card decks. So I had this giant card deck that I had written to try to get the computer to play chess. The computer ran out of memory in the first one and a half rounds of the game. By the time I went through the first game, first one and a half moves, there was no more memory in the computer. So it's just one of those weird things about computing power and how those things try to go. The trouble with trying to program a computer to play chess is you have to get the second and third level thinking. So yesterday, two days ago, I said, we saw something we never saw before. Oil was negative $30 a barrel. And I don't know how that worked because I went to the gas station and they didn't give me any money. But if I've got negative $30 a barrel oil, everybody goes, that's terrible, that's terrible. I go, if you were the cargo airline, which is called Atlas Air, if you were Atlas Air and you were shipping for Amazon, which is who they ship for, you probably were sitting there going, this is really cool. We, just, we are going to go out and buy all our jet fuel right now as cheap as we can get it, and I'm going to pack it up and store it. And as a matter of fact, if you'd have had a very large crude carrier on, on uh, Wednesday, you would have gotten 100000 bucks rent for one day just to have that crude carrier filled up with 2 million barrels of oil. Because literally, on Wednesday, you were getting paid to take the oil. Somebody would pay you to take 2 million barrels of oil and put it in a, in a tank. And so we got to get to second, third level thinking, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. The, the real question we're going to have to ask ourselves is what's this going to look like in the future? Hospitals and healthcare has just got another $75 billion in appropriations. If you're watching the news, Beaumont's been laying people off. We've got, uh, you know, DMC's been laying people off. Everyone thinks the hospitals are really, really busy. They're not. No one's getting elective surgery. No one's getting their knees replaced. No one's going to, you can't even go to your allergist these days. I'm doing a tele a teleconference with my doctor at 1030, just a remote medicine thing, just to pick up, just to get my prescription filled up. And we're going to do telemedicine and she's going to go, oh, how are you doing? Stand on your scale. Show me how much you weigh, which I'll have to adjust the scale so it looks lighter. Uh, but because I can cheat on my home scale. And, uh, we, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give her this mythical thing that I'm really, I'm really taking good care of myself, which actually I am. But the hospital, so the hospital uh, field is going to be dramatically changed. I mean, talk to your friends at Ascension, and if they're not treating COVID patients, they're not busy. And talk to your doctor friends, and they're, if they're not treating COVID, they're not busy. And we're going to see some amazing, weird stuff on that. On a good news front, one of my friends uh, was called by General Motors to build molds to make, res uh, to make respirators. And yesterday, I saw the first General Motors respirator that's already being made in, in two weeks. General Motors retooled Kokomo, and my friend built the, built the molds, and they've got the pieces put together. And that, that shows you how fast we can act when we want to. And I'm also seeing all kinds of cool things. Mayor Barnett in Rochester just got 50,000 masks delivered to his front door. He went out on his front door, and there's 50,000 masks there for, for firefighters and cops. And, I, you know, sometimes these terrible times bring out the best in us, as long, and we also see the worst in what is there. Coronavirus testing got another $25 billion of new funding. Um, isn't it weird how we learn things that we never thought we were going to learn? I've learned more about viruses than I ever thought I was going to know. I, and I know now more about a virus than I ever want to know and ever could know. Um, we have clients and friends at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, the Cleveland Clinic Research Department has identified 16 antivirals 
of which two are showing very good promise. Um, I've also read a great article about a lab, a nonprofit lab that's funded by Zuckerberg out in California that's able to take the testing and building the testing up really good. Uh, I, I think what I'm seeing out there, the scientists are telling us that the, the uh, vaccine is a ways off, but they're also telling us that a treatment is really getting close. We're getting really, really close. And I think treatment's going to be a lot better. Imagine they tell us that, okay, you go out, you social distance, you wear a mask, we'll probably not get the virus. If you do get the virus now, the odds of you dying from it has gone down 90%. That will make a difference. I think that will make a difference. Uh, one of my employees had COVID. She recovered. My nephew had it really bad and was in an ICU for 10 days at 100% on event. 42-year-old healthy man. Uh, luckily, he recovered. So, so far, I've been affected by it directly. I've had my nephew, who I love, and my, my assistant, who I also love, uh, have the virus. It is a bad virus, but if we can get the treatment down, the treatment vector will change. The infection vector, we've, we've got semi under control. Uh, the treatment vector will make a big difference. A weird thing, and you math, you math nerds like me will like this, when China first announced, I was looking at all the numbers, and I, I laughed, and I said to my son, who's a really smart math guy, I said, look, what, what math model are they using for this? He goes, they're using a quadratic equation. I said, yeah, and, and, and infection isn't a quadratic equation. It's an exponential equation. He said, they're lying. He said, yeah, they are. So I talked to another friend who's really smart, smarter than him and me, and they said, yeah, you're right. And so we looked, at the, we looked at the infection vector, and sure enough, China started announcing the real numbers. We saw it go up. Here's my prediction, and I don't know anything about virology, but we only know the number of people we've tested who have the virus. We, do, we know the number of people died. That's a fixed number. We absolutely know that. We know the number of people that we've tested that have the virus. We have no idea how many people have had the virus that we haven't tested. And I'm going to predict, just being Leon's wild prediction here, just like I'll predict we recover, I'll make a prediction that almost 60 times more people have had the virus than we think. And what we're going to find out is, well, the, virus, the coronavirus is really awful and 30,000 people died or whatever, and 60 million people had it. That's gonna, that, that is a possible outcome we're going to come back to and we're going to go, wow, we really, we really made, made a big reaction on this. Maybe, maybe it wasn't as, as ter you know, horrendous as we thought. Just a thought. State, local, and tribal governments getting $150 billion. The rumor on, on D.C. this morning is Pennsylvania is going to declare bankruptcy. That's, that's the noise I'm hearing, that we're going to see state bankruptcies. And um, I, I, don't ask me what that means. I, I worked on the Detroit bankruptcy, came out okay for us, but uh, that just really asks a whole bunch of new questions and asks some questions about you know, municipal bonds and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, 30 billion goes for colleges. I was talking to somebody from Oakland on my Rochester uh, foundation call and Oakland's on all right now remote classes. Uh, they may go remote in the fall. And I, I think all of that is predicated on what happens in the news on treatment coming into play right now. And then last but not least, ag is out there and they've, they've got an ag bailout program that's expanded up by $20 billion. Uh, it I drives me nuts when I see on television the milk being dumped and the eggs being dumped and you know, farmers dumping their crops. Uh, luckily in Michigan, we haven't had that problem. We, we have had, uh, Michigan farmers have been getting their, their stuff to market and the food banks and the other folks are, are working on that. I'm going to pop another screen on if you don't mind. Just a couple things. And while I'm at it, let's go here. So I do, I do want to just run through 12 things, and they're, and they're simple things, but I want you to go with, I'm going I'm to leave you with my thought on two roles, and then we'll open up conversation because it's a nice, small, intimate group. Um, you ever went on a plane, and they tell you the safety thing? You've heard, I've heard the safety thing a million times. And they go, in the event of an emergency, oxygen masks will descend from the ceiling. Always put your own mask on first, and then assist others needing assistance. And if you were on Southwest, they always said something funny. If you're with a child or someone acting like a child, you know, put your mask on first. If you're a business owner, you got to put your ask, oxygen mask on first. So at our shop where we have 91 employees and, you know, our revenue went down and we immediately, you know, got hit with this, you know, our CEO and I sat down and he said, what do you need? What do we think we should do? I said, well, put our own oxygen mask on first. I'm going to get our PPP application together because if we can't stay in business, we can't help anybody. So we immediately went after that and went after our PPP. And I said, well, while you're at it, I think you ought to make sure you're going to be okay. So go get your durable and healthcare power of attorney in order and do the same thing for your mom and dad and do the same thing for your kids. I said, if you're sick, we ain't, we're not going to be in good shape. 
And if you're sick and we don't have a power of attorney, I don't want to be scrambling around trying to get your wife to sign a power of attorney for you. I want it now. So, you know, it's just one of those simple, put your oxygen mask on first. Make sure you got all your health insurance policies there. I mean, you know, you know your mom and dad's, do you know your mom's health care policy? Do you know the access to it? Do you have her account number somewhere? Do you know if she has an HSA account? How about your 18-year-old kids? By the way, bad story. My 18-year-old daughter, who's now 23 years old and getting her PhD at Berkeley and teaching at Berkeley virtually, got hit by a car in D.C. Out of, getting out of an Uber. She got out of an Uber, and she's a little bitty thing, and she got the mirror clipped her head and gave her a head injury. Didn't, luckily, everything came out okay. I'm in British Columbia. So I'm trying to figure out how to talk to the doctor, and I'm calling and raising hell, and the nurse says, do you have a health care power of attorney? And I go, no, I don't have a health care power of attorney. I'm in British Columbia. And she said, well, then I can't tell you anything. I go, give me a supervisor. And I get a supervisor, and I'm pounding my chest and playing lawyer King Kong and, you know, screaming and yelling. And the, the nurse supervisor finally says, look, you sound like a smart guy. You're a lawyer? I go, yeah. She goes, you know what a HIPAA waiver is? I go, yeah. She goes, show me a HIPAA waiver. I'll tell you your kid about your kid. She goes, I can't do it. It's against the law. It's against federal law. I said, all right. She said, oh, one more thing. I said, what? She goes, she's okay. I said, thank you. But get a health care power of attorney on the kids. Understand their stuff. Health savings accounts, same thing. HSAs, you know, do you know your mom's HSA card? Does she have one? I mean, you know, what happens if, you know, these, these nursing homes are really bad spots. What happens if mom's in a nursing home? Do you know what's going on with mom and dad? I just think those are important things. Have an executive backup plan of three layers. By the way, I'm a three-layer guy on everything. On your power of attorney, have three layers. Person one, person two, person three. So I, I've, I've, I'll have a client, they'll say, I need a healthcare power of attorney, name, name my spouse. I go, okay, cool. They said, well, what happens? I said, what happens if, uh, you know, who's, who's next? They go, oh, no, my spouse is fine. I go, I hate to tell you this. Nobody gets out of this world alive. So somebody, everybody on that power of attorney is eventually not going to be able to act. So let's do three layers. And same thing on executive backup. I got a client. He's got, he, his boss had a fever. So I said, well, he said, what should I do? I said, tell him not to come in. I said, if he infects everybody, we're going to get sued. Tell him to stay home, quarantine, stay away. So, the, you know, we, the boss gets on the phone because he didn't believe my friend who's the COO. And he says, ask Leon. I go, do you, you, can I just get a retainer now to defend you when you get all these lawsuits? He goes, no, no, I'll go home. I said, good, go home. Then I said to Sean, I said, what if you get sick? He goes, oh, I won't. Guess what he did? He got sick. He didn't get COVID, but he got sick. I go, three layers, three layers of protection. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. What happens? We're hopefully getting out of this, but isn't this a good idea anyway? Everything I'm telling you on this, by the way, you should do good times or bad times. Make sure your own personal financials are in order. Get your financial plan. Never, ever in history have you not needed a financial plan as you do now. It's just absolutely, you got to have one. And it's changing daily, as you figured out. Do you have enough cash reserves? I'm getting asked all kinds of interview questions. How much should I have? I've always said in the past three months expenses, but it could be three, it could be six. I'm thinking more now. I'm thinking right now, Ann and I have always kept about a 12 month expense cash reserve. It sure makes us feel better in these trying times that I could last a year on what I got in the, in the tank. So it's like filling up your gas tank, fill up your cash reserves. Now, right now we're in the middle of it. So going trying to fill up your cash reserves now, Maybe not as easy, but I'm going to suggest on your budget, do the Clint Eastwood budget, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So have the, your personal budget. If everything stays fine, we get back. I'll talk about a V, and then I'll talk about a U, and I'll talk about a W. Um, I, I think you ought to have a plan for each one of those things. Credit line's all good? Good. Um, I'm suggesting don't mess with your credit right now. You can up your, up your limits if you want to do that. Do not cancel cards. That hurts your credit score. Um, make sure your, your cards, just keep them all in there. Make sure they're all being paid. Go check your credit score and see if there's any immediate fixes. Go on Experian or you go on some of the other spots. Sometimes just paying down one can make a difference. Or there's errors, believe it or not, on your credit report. Uh, pull those errors off there. I'm telling folks to rebalance their portfolios. It's really hard in this market. Our, I, I wrote an article in Forbes, and I closed the article with, don't just do something, stand there. Because everybody was saying, oh, the market's falling, I should get out. I go, nope. Oh, the market's falling. I should get in. I go, nope. You should stick to your original strategy. If you were 60-40, you want to maybe keep yourself at 60-40. If you're feeling truly opportunistic, I was mentioning to Elena earlier, when the, I'm, we're, you know, uh, I, I bought some Zoom. 
because I, I thought Zoom was a good thing to have because you can do virtual backgrounds as opposed to WebEx. Zoom's been a good stock for me. I bought some Amazon because I figured, well, I'm, I'm buying everything from Amazon anyway. And now I have a regular, I'm, I'm on a regular terms waving to my Amazon drivers who come by the house all the time, which by the way, I'm, I'm determining that I'm trying not to use Amazon now, I'm trying to go to Dillman and Upton. I'm trying to do anything else locally because I just, you know, I, I'm not helping things by using Amazon so much. But uh, if you're feeling opportunistic, you could rebalance into that. You can also just allocate your 401k. If you're putting in your 401k right now and you think we're going to recover, you might start slipping your monthly contributions into equities. But do not make any dramatic moves. That's one of my main pieces. Uh, we've been doing tax loss harvesting, which I call tax swapping. Uh, I've got a fund in my taxable account. It's down. I swap it for another similar but not identical fund. There's an important rule called the wash sale rule. You know, be careful of that. I did a Forbes article on this, but this is a perfect time to do uh, tax loss harvesting. This is actually probably one of the best times in history to do Roth. If you haven't filed your 2019 return yet, actually it doesn't matter if you filed it or not, you have until July 15th, 2020, to make a Roth contribution, a contributory Roth contribution to a 2019 Roth IRA. This is a great time to put in a Roth. Market's down, tax rates are down, and it's tax-free growth. So I, I'm looking at Roth conversions. Mom or dad have a Roth. Mom or dad have a regular IRA. They're probably in a low tax bracket. Convert them into a Roth as well. Those are some ideas that we're working on. We think this is probably the best time in history to do a Roth conversion. It is my humble opinion that we're going to see higher tax rates. And I can tell you with some authority that in 2025, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expires and tax rates do go up for everybody on this call. But I'm looking at what's happening right now, and I'm already hearing from D.C. the noise. And the noise is already starting. Let's get rid of the estate tax. You know, that's, that's already being talked, to, talked about in ways and means already. They're already talking about that. And you get a sea change in D.C. in the White House when I leave my office here and somebody else goes in the office, say, say a different than the current resident, that new resident might not want to have income taxes the way they are. That new resident might want to have a value-added tax or the new resident might want other things in there. Somebody's going to make us pay for all this money. So I, I said this earlier, I'm just being sound like Debbie Downer here, but we're not all going to get COVID, but we're all going to pay for it. So Roths make perfect sense. I convert mom's IRA to a Roth. Mom does now not have to take the RMD. Mom does not pay taxes on it. And if mom passes, when mom passes, she leaves it to me and I get 10 years to take it out tax-free. That's a new rule, by the way. I used to be able to take it over my lifetime, but now I have to take it over 10 years. Uh, strong one on this one. These are all strong ideas that you should be thinking about. Make sure your company cash flows project is projected. Uh, again, the good, the bad, the ugly. What do you think is going to happen? Right now, I've got clients getting the PPP. We're talking to them, but they're saying, well, we're going to bring everybody back and pay them during the time. I said, no, let them collect unemployment for a while. Make sure you bring them back at the end. It might be more important to have money than to have forgiveness. And so we got to balance those types of things. The good is a V. I'm skeptical we're going to get a V. I think the president thinks we're going to get a V. I don't think we're going to get a V. A V means we all start going back to work. So magic happens. Some magical person, Dr. Fauci, comes up and announces, and I love Dr. Fauci. He's my favorite guy on TV right now because he's the only one I think is making sense. But Dr. Fauci comes on and says, I've got great news. Johnson & Johnson and Gilead Scientific have found a vaccine, and we can all take it, and we'll put it on pineapple-flavored Lifesavers, and everybody will get it. So we're going to have a, everybody gets a roll of pineapple favorite lifesavers. They're free and you take them. And after five days, you're completely immune to coronavirus and everybody can go back to work and get back to what you're doing. Cool. That's the good. We're still going to be different. We're still going to be different. I still think people aren't going to go on cruises and we're not going to fly on airplanes and we're not going to do all that other stuff. We are not going back to February 15th. It will not happen that way. But the V would be a pretty good recovery. We'd all be taking our pineapple flavor lifesavers, and, and life would be good and the economy would get back to going again. A U would be we go down and stay down for a while and then go back up. That's what I think will happen. I think we eventually will end up with a pineapple-flavored lifesavers. I think we eventually will end up with some way of treating this. But our hospital system's going to be damaged really hard. It got hit with a torpedo. I think we're going to have a lot more meetings like this. I'm not sure the entertainment business and the, the event facilities are going to be the same way. I'm not sure foreign travel is going to be the same way. I think a lot of us are going to be there. And I think all of us are going to look at our supply chains and say, you know, like right now, General Motors can't get wiring harnesses because Mexico has closed everything down. 
in Mexico won't open anything up because they only have 4,000 ventilators in the whole country. So Mexico would be devastated if they get more than 4,000 cases of COVID. So General Motors is going to say, wait a minute, I don't want my supply chain disrupted by another country. I don't want to have to go to China for health stuff. I don't want to go to all those different places. I think we're going to see a supply chain change. And I think we're going to get a tax change. And before this all happened, I was working on a project on what's going to happen to the demographic shift when the millennials and the Gen Zs come of age. How do you think this is going to change our millennial kids and our Gen Zs? How are they going to be different? How are they going to act? And how more prone are they going to be to say, oh, we want low taxes and little government? They might say, no, we want big taxes and big government. We want to be Sweden. We don't want to be the old United States. We want to be the new United States. So the U is probably in there. An uglier one is the W. That's when it goes down, we get a V because we think we're good. We come out of the woods thinking we can eat the pineapple flavored lifesavers and they don't work and we get reinfection. And that's what Dr. Fauci is worried about. The W is like what happened in 1980 and 1981. We got a recession, a recovery, and a recession. Bang, bang, bang. If you want to remember, think Ronald Reagan. Think Ronald Reagan. Think the Iran-Contra affair. Think of the Dow at 800, not 8,000. 64. Think of interest rates at 16%. That was 1980. By the way, when I graduated from high school in 1973, we were in a U-shaped recession. When I graduated from CPA school and business school in 1977, we were in a V-shaped recession. And when I graduated from law school in 1980, we were in a W-shaped recession. So I assure you, I'm not getting any more degrees and I'm through. So we will, I'll, I'll stop the Lebrecht curse on recessions. There's one more ugly one. It's so ugly, I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's called an L. Uh, I hopefully we won't have one, even though the guy named Lebrecht told you about it. Make sure all your credit comp company credit lines are in place. I think you, you do some capital stripping. I've got clients that have lines of credit. I go, pull it. They go, what do you mean pull? I said, pull the money out. They said, why would I pull the money out? I said, because it's way easier for your bank to tell you you don't have a line of credit for them to get the money back from you. So don't spend it. Pull it out. Pull it out. Of the, put it somewhere where you can get your hands on it. Have some dry powder. So dry powder wins in these about these times. I read Darwin, and Darwin, if you want to read Darwin in his, in his, his best, he's windy and long-winded. He did not say the strong survive and the weak perish. He said the adaptable survive. The most adaptable organism is the organism that survives. And as you'll get to my bottom line, my bottom line is we want to be the last one standing in this. Somebody's got to be there. So my first rule was always put your own oxygen mask on first. And my second rule is always live to fight another day. And that's kind of the key thing. Review and revise any capital spending plans. Obviously, you don't want to do capital spending right now. But man, my smart, the smart people are going, this is going to be good. I'm, I'm going to have some people going out of business. And I'm going to go buy their equipment. And like right now, I'm looking at our competition. I, I'm, I'm going to go to this one. Hold on. I'm monitoring our competition. I'm looking for people I might want to hire. Because in my, in my business, we're a really, really good wealth management shop. And there's some really, really good people I want to hire. And I'm talking to them like crazy. And I don't know if their bosses know this, but I'm talking to them on LinkedIn and I'm telling them all kinds of good stuff and I'm sharing ideas and I'm saying, let's do webinars. And they're going, gosh, we're not doing webinars. I mean, even to the extent that we work with two giant custodians, Fidelity and Schwab, we're doing webinars for Schwab right now because they can't pull off what we're doing in this simple little format because they're not ready for this. We're adaptable. So being the adaptable organism is huge. And I know this sounds Machiavellian, but somebody in our business is not going to make it. Let's make sure it's not us. You know, that's one of the key things. Pop up for a couple more. Just make sure we got an effective customer communication plan. I, I you know, I know I sound, I have, a, I have a, I don't have my glass in front of me. I have a glass that's a, like a tumbler and it's got a line in the middle and on the top it says optimista. In the bottom it says pessimista. And, you know, are you an optimist or a pessimist? Is the glass half full or the glass half empty? Everybody who knows me knows which one I am. I'm the optimista. Here's my thought. We sat down and it took me four minutes to get online with y'all. And we're having a conversation and we're talking to each other. How, are you, how have we done that opportunity before? Elena would have had a big event. We would have went over to the palace and it would have been torn down so we couldn't have it there and we'd have to go somewhere else and then we would, she'd have to buy cookies and she'd have to get food and we'd have to have introductions and everybody would talk and we'd have noise and there'd be cell phones and we'd have to put our coats away. And instead, we're all sitting there and I'm wearing a pair of sweatpants and a sport jacket talking to you and I'll go talk, I'm going to go talk to a U.S. congressman at one o'clock and be on with public affairs associates and then I'll be doing one tomorrow 
for a, a Fidelity branch. The interesting thing is every customer you have and every prospect you have, you know where they are right now. What an opportunity. Every potential Rochester Chamber new member, we can get to them. We don't even have to go by their office. They're not in their office. They're sitting on the end of a computer. So this is grand opportunity, but I'm going to ask you a simple question. Your new strategy has to incorporate this new world, and you ought to be thinking about what's that new strategy. So one of the things I'm working on right now is what's the digital client experience? So I picked up a client. I saw them on WebEx. We talked to them. They signed up. We sent them their forms. They signed the forms electronically. We did it on Zoom. We set up the account, and I'm already managing their money. I'm managing their money now. I've never, I haven't shaken their hand. I didn't even have them come to the office. I didn't have to do anything. It took an hour of my time and an hour of one of our associates' time. And we got a client, and we're helping this client. We're, we're doing a financial plan for them, and we're delivering a financial plan. I'm delivering a great big financial plan next week to a, a large client, and we, we sit down and have our virtual meeting and get this done. What's the digital client experience look like now, and what will it look like later? I think I'll, I'm going to, I like doing seminars this way. I'm going to do more webinars. I've always liked to do webinars, and I like to do it in person. But luckily, I like doing this. This way is actually really simple for me because I like wearing sweatpants. So it's, it's going to be an interesting piece. What's your new strategy? Look at the business taxes. You know, is this crisis going to generate an NOL? Are there any issue, issues with loss limitations, interest limitations? I, I mean, I just see businesses are going to have a, a whole bunch of tax planning to have a look at. The last one is make sure your team's good. Give your A players whatever support. Um, I'm finding in our shop, everybody's stressed by this stay at home. And so now I'm just doing things like just calling them just to call them. Like my graphic designer is having, a, she's having anxiety attacks. And so I called her up. She goes, oh, God, what do you need? I go, I don't need anything. I just want to see how you're doing. I know your daughter's graduating from high school. What does she need for a graduation present? I want to get her something. She said, you're just calling for that? I go, yeah. I said, if we were in the office, I would come by your office and, you know, bought you a cup of coffee or something, and we would have talked. Let's just talk. I'm, we're, we're missing this inner human reaction. And how do you, you know, how do you psychologically and behaviorally protect your team? I think that's really, really, really important. So I'll leave you this last message, and we'll open it up and just chat if you want. You know, my first rule, put your oxygen mask on first. My second rule, always live to fight another day. Because this is going to end, but you don't have to end. So those are my thoughts. And I'm stopping my video sharing. I'm going to go to someplace more pleasant. So I'm by where Tanya is. Now we're working together. All right. So um, I got a lot of chat questions. So let's open up the chat. I think <laughs> you have a, a few. Uh, Leon for president. Yeah. Well, I like myself in the Oval Office. <laughs> <laughs> Lawyer King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. I, I got guesses. Yeah. Hoping 55, 80, the only, James was the closest at 85%. <laughs> yeah, and Chiefs is, uh, somebody said Chief is doing a great job. Yeah, lots of good positive feedback. Chief's a good, good credit union, small local credit union. Uh, Tom, the president and CEO, is a really good guy. Yeah. Um, Those who don't know, Tom is on our board of directors. Yeah, he's, uh, Tom's, uh, Tom's a, great, a great asset to the to community. I really like Tom, and I, any way we could do business with him, I, I like it. Uh, Chief does, there are no fees associated with uh, a PPP loan, but Chief does get paid from the government. So it helps, it helps the credit union too. And this new aspect of the bill sets aside 60 billion for credit unions. So if you know people who haven't gotten the PPP, uh, as I understand it, Chief is uh, Chief's running them through their uh, CUSO pretty quick. Christina said she called uh, PNC. I've heard same, same noise from PNC. Uh, Comerica and PNC have not been very fast in reacting. My suggestion to anybody on PPP or trying to get a PPP, it's a relationship gig. It shouldn't be. It should be math, but it's relationship. So bug your banker, do a Zoom with your banker, you know, talk to your banker, you know, whatever you do. Schmooze them, tell them they look nice, tell them everything's great, send them a box of candy, but keep pushing them because that makes a big deal. Uh, Rochester Regional, you know, reassign your employee tasks they can do at home. I think it's a great idea. I've been telling some of my folks, and mine are busy. We're in the category of, I'm running into people are either real busy or they're not busy at all. In fact, the, the ones that are not busy at all are annoying me because they're asking me, well, you got all kinds of time on your hands. I go, no, I don't. I'm busier than I've ever been. And I, you know, I, I'm literally working 12, 14, 15 hours now instead of my normal. 
I used to get up at, now I got to get up and figure out what's going on in DC and figure out what's going on in Lansing and everywhere else. But to my employees that aren't fully busy, I go, look, go look at it. Here's our competitors. Go look at their websites. See what they're writing about. Go on LinkedIn every day and pick me up five new people, your people. You pick up five new people on LinkedIn every single day. And if you see a good blog article, I want you to rewrite it and I want you to repost. And I want you to learn more about WebEx. And I want you to learn some new piece. And I mean, it's just one of those things of set that out there. You probably all know this, but you can take classes at Harvard, Stanford, and MIT for free. You know, I'm, I'm telling myself, look, you, know, you, you don't know Excel. Why don't you take an hour a day and work on Excel? Or better, Python. We can use that more. Or Zoom or whatever. So it's, it's, there's, there's a lot to it, and there's enormous amounts. What I'm finding is our, I've got our people turned on to marketing. We have this weird thing that we've learned. Um, we have a privilege of being in what's called the WAS program with Fidelity. Fidelity only has 89 advisors in the country that they'll refer their clients to. We're one of them. The other 88 are really good. I mean, these are like formidable opponents. If I, they are the best in the business, no question. Fidelity has a rule that every, every advisor can only talk to one branch twice a year. But they, they said that the rule doesn't apply in these times. You can talk digitally. Well, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to go talk to every single Fidelity branch I can get my hands on digitally as fast as I possibly can. And you know what other response I'm getting from the Fidelity reps? Gosh, no one else is doing this. Perfect. Adaptability. Perfect. So that point, be adaptable, strategic. Ask your team, what is it we can do differently and what's going to change? And what can we do right now since we know where every single client and every customer and prospect is? I just think that's a biggie. That makes a huge difference. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, yeah, Christina applied for the EIDL. That's different than the PPP. They should be faster. Um, yep, U of M hospital, people sitting around all day. I'm hearing the same thing. They're going to they're gonna have furloughs at U of M. I have clients that, that are at um, Cleveland Clinic. Cleveland Clinic has got a huge endowment, a billion-dollar endowment. They're using their endowment to keep everybody on. Um, uh, Beaumont laid off, I think, 2,400 people yesterday and 400 permanently got rid of them. Uh, you know, the milk, when there isn't any milk on the local department stores, it's just crazy. The, the food thing I'm, I'm worried about. I think we could do some things for neighborhood house through the community foundation. We're talking about that, getting food through neighborhood house. Uh, we're trying to get, you know, eggs, eggs through farmers up in Lapeer County. It's just a good time that we can all work together. Uh, let's see. Pat says, explain to clients why an emergency fund's critical. It'd be an easier conversation going forward. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, you tell people now, you know, I think you should have a power of attorney. I don't have anybody saying, oh, I don't need one. And, you know, I think you should have an emergency fund. Yeah, that was a, you, you told me that four years ago. That's a really good idea. And so it's, uh, it, is, it is intriguing. We had a, I had a client who, who came into a windfall uh, earlier this year and had a million bucks sitting around in cash. Now, let's go buy some stocks. I go, well, let's wait and see. Let's see if we can get some good ones. I said, you know, I, I'm not, let's not be in a rush. You know, like, we can do this over 12 weeks. Or we can do it over 12, you know, 12 months. It's, it's not good to just try to jump in. Timing the market isn't a great idea. And so, you know, we didn't do anything. Boy, are they happy. Boy, are they happy. Yeah. So just, just, some, just some things to think about, just having those things. I'm open for a V. Um, do I have any thoughts on phases to start opening the economy? Yeah, I've been hearing this from a variety of sources. So the, the, I'm hearing different versions. Some are scary and some are not as scary. Uh, I hear the governor is going to change a little bit of the draconian order she has, which I actually contacted her and said, you know, you told me I can't go up to Torch Lake, but I can go to Home Depot in Petoskey. You told me I can paddle my kayak in my canoe, but I can't run my powerboat, but I can go to the gas station with my car. I can go to Akron to my Akron office, but I can't go to my Troy office. Tell me how this is going to work. How is this any logical way of doing things? So I'm hearing one is taking essential services and just having, this is the most likely, we're going to have protective gear and we're going to have some other places to work in a way, way to get to work. In our office, we're having eight foot spacing. We're alternating employees. We're telling any employee that wants to can stay and work at home as long as they work. We're providing masks to clients and to employees. And this is important. We're having employees self-diagnose temperatures. I don't think it's a good idea for an employer to take the temperatures. And I'm not a practicing labor attorney, but if you're taking the temperature, you're assuming the responsibility for the employee's temperature. If you're telling the employee to vouch for the fact that they don't have a fever and they have a fever, it's their fault, not your fault. So I am suggesting, and we're doing this, self-reporting. 
So I think that gradually starts working its way, its way back in, and that's what I'm hearing is the gradual approach. I'm hearing from the medical side that people who have already had the virus, which is a lot, I'm predicting, are immune. They can go back to work and don't have to have restrictions. They can't give it to you and they can't catch it. We, we could end up in a weird case where you've got the haves and the have nots. It's going to be, you know, you got the red dot or the green dot. You got a green dot, you can go to work and move around the country and do what you want, and the helicopters aren't flying over the golf course yelling at you because you put your head up and say, I got a green dot. You got a red dot, and everybody treats you like a pariah until you get it. And I, I'm worried about the red dot, green dot, but scientists are saying that one would work. You could say, all right, everybody take a test. If you already had the virus, go to work. Do whatever you want to do. If you didn't have the virus, stay home. And I don't know, Italy is still shut down. Eight weeks, eight weeks, Italy is shut down completely. So weird thing. So I, I'm hearing that phasing. I'm also hearing what I call regional phasing. A regional phasing would say Detroit would be under certain circumstances, but Antrim County would not. So I've been t I have a friend, the Antrim County Sheriff's a friend of mine, and I am th thinking about going up to the Home Depot in Petoskey and stopping by my place in Antrim County. And there aren't any cases in Antrim County. Everybody is still following all the rules, but there are pretty much, there's like pretty much no cases. So they're not overwhelming the health system and nothing else is going on up there. Antrim County would be like, I would call it a level one. You can do certain things. Detroit would be a level five. And I've heard that variation too on, on the phases to start reopening the economy. Uh, I think the Fed and the government threw as much money as, that, as they could possibly come up with. Money is absolutely no object. If you remember, we came out of 08, 09 in a deep U. And we did all this stuff in, in, in steps. This time they did it all at once. So my version of what's going to happen is we're going to have the deepest, fastest recession in U.S. history. Uh, don't be surprised to see gross domestic product for this quarter, negative 25, negative 30%. Could be even more. I mean, just gonna, that's unbelievable. We're going to have an unbelievable, deadly downturn for the quarter. And then we could come out of the quarter pretty darn quick because we've thrown $5 trillion at the issue. Just I want you to put this in perspective. We put about $5 trillion in the last four weeks into the U.S. economy. And the entire amount of all income taxes collected by the United States government last year was $1.7 trillion. Okay? So every penny that the government collected from individuals was $1.7 trillion, and we put $5 trillion into the system. So there's, there's the thought for you to think about. Um, I have not heard about MSU Federal Credit Union. I know they're a really good credit union. I think all Genesis and MSU are all using the same CUSO out of Grand Rapids. So I would say, Jeff, I think just about any credit union, from what I'm reading in the new end of the act, would be a good place to go. I think that'd be a, a much better place to go. Um, Bruce, Cor Bruce says he has a small corporation, put everybody on unemployment, applied for PPP and EIDL, communicate heavy to them, why they want to remain on the team, what key indicators should I determine when to bring them back? If you're using, if you're trying to bring them back for, for purposes, I think you're asking, the forgiveness on the PPP is you want to get them back within an eight-week period. I have heard, I don't know, I have heard they're extending that eight-week period if you're on shutdown. Because what we're saying, CPAs, what we're saying to Congress is, wait a minute, if we can't go to work, it's not fair to make us pay the loan back in eight weeks. We can't, you know, it's, it's, just, it's not going to be a fair thing. So I'm hearing they might do that. So I, I'm not sure um, what, what's going to happen in terms of forgiveness. We're balancing it on who's good and who's bad. So what I'm telling people to do is think about doing a retention bonus. So let's say you have 10 employees and you have to bring them back by the end. They're on unemployment. Retention bonuses count toward payroll. So you say to your employees, look, go collect unemployment for a while. I don't need you right now. As soon as we get back open, come back and I'll pay you. And when you come back, I'm going to give you five grand if you stay to the end of the year. But I'll give you the five grand now. You got to pay me back by the end of the year if you, if you leave. And it's, that would work. And I think that's kind of a, a really interesting piece. I, I think that would be something we might want to play with and, you know, pay attention to. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here? A good question on the draft. I don't know. I think they're going to go to the Dolphins or I'm not sure. Yeah, they got number three tonight, so I'm really happy about that. I think they're going to do something with it. I don't know. I mean, it's good to have number three. And I actually promised that I was never going to complain about the Lions again. If I can go back to a Lions game, I, I was missing, I'm missing baseball like crazy. I'm missing going down to the DAC and partying in the little lounge. And I said to my wife, I said, I can't stand this. I want to go see a sports game. I said, I can't want to go see the Lions. I, I, she goes, you want to go see the Lions? You hate the Lions. I go, I don't care. I don't hate them anymore. 
If I could just go to a Lions game, I can put up with it, spill beer on me, it'll be fine. So it's it's just it's weird. I I I'm dying for that. I'm dying for an MSU game. I'm, my son's graduating from. This is a sad one for me. My son's getting his PhD from Michigan State. He was supposed to go walk for his PhD. First PhD in the family ever, you know. And my daughter's trying to catch up with him and be a PhD at Berkeley. But I, I'm all excited. I got the, I went and bought the doctoral robe and all this other stuff. I got him this nice present, but I already drank it. I mean, it's it, it's you know it's one of these weird things. I'm saying I'm I'm feeling you know just this pain, this emptiness of not being able to see my son graduate with his, you know, get his, his walk, walk the aisle at Michigan State after having been to his previous two graduations at Michigan State and my daughter's graduation from Michigan State and my other daughter's graduation from GW. So, I mean, that's an event in my life that's changed. So from now on, I'm going to honk at every wedding I see. I'm going to say the sign of the cross at every funeral I see. And I'm going to cheer for every sports team, whether it's a bunch of eight-year-olds running around a soccer field like ants or whether it's the Lions. And I'm just going to be there the, the whole way. So I, I'm in there. A uh, couple more thoughts. Christina said, should you resubmit the EDIL? No, you should bug the hell out of PNC. Um, they, they claim they have no control. Just keep bugging PNC and bug the SBA. That helps too. And <laughs> Tony said, the lions is a pain you forget like childbirth. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what it's like. I forgot the pain of the lions right now. I accept the pain of the lions. Well, any other questions? Elena, is it, you, I mean, give me a quick input. Was this useful? Was this helpful to you? This was amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Leon. We really appreciate your insight uh, and your humor, taking some uh, topics and subjects that could be quite dry and boring and uninteresting, um, and you always make them interesting and fun. Uh, plus your insight, uh, in giving us context um, so that we can truly understand what we're seeing right now um, is so beneficial. Okay. Um, so thank you so much, Leon. We appreciate it. Thank I'm you, be... everybody. <laughs> Here we go, a virtual, <laughs> a virtual clap for Leon. Thanks, right. everybody. Thanks. <laughs>